It's Professor Adam. Let's talk about coordination compounds. What are transition metal elements and what makes them so special? A transition metal element is any element that has a partially filled d orbital in its most common oxidation state. This often makes them vibrantly colored with variable oxidation state and coordination numbers coupled with often being paramagnetic. While the elemental or gas versions of d-block elements have s electrons, when they form complexes, their electronic configuration changes. Let's take a closer look at this with this hexaamine cobalt-3 chloride complex. As the complex is forming, the cobalt atom undergoes a change. Before losing electrons to form the ion, the electrons in the 4s orbital shift to the 3d orbital giving us a 3d9 configuration. A similar change happens in most transition metals. In vanadium, the electronic configuration changes from 3d3, 4s2 to 3d5 in a complex, and the same thing happens across the d-block transition metals. To form a cation, we must remove electrons from the atom. This is called oxidation. If we take this hexaamine nickel 2 chloride complex, we know that the oxidation state of the nickel is 2 from the name. To find the electronic configuration of nickel, we subtract 2 electrons from the coordination complex elemental configuration of D10 to get D8. Now this D8 has 3 partially filled orbitals, and so nickel in this complex fits our definition of a transition metal. Here are some common oxidation states of the first row transition metals. The common oxidation states of d-block metals often have partially filled d orbitals. In the case of iron, its electronic configuration first shifts from 3d6,4s2 to 3d8 before forming any ions. Its 3 plus oxidation state then includes 5 partially filled d orbitals, and in its 2 plus state we have 4 partially filled orbitals. Some trends in the d-block include an expected decrease in atomic radius as effective nuclear charge increases, but because the atomic outer s electrons are shielded by 3d electrons, only a small increase in the effective nuclear charge occurs. Hence, the contraction in size is much smaller than observed for s or p-block elements. The increase in ionization energy of the d-block is also small in comparison to that of the p-block elements. Electronegativities gently increase for the first series and generally lie between those of calcium and gallium. There is a gentle increase across the row, but this increase is remarkably small, especially compared to the p-block. This is caused by the increased penetration effect or stronger effective nuclear charge. For the d-block, the electronegativity of the transition metal elements increases progressing down a column due to the poor shielding from diffuse d orbitals. This is the opposite of the main group elements. Whilst any d block element could be a transition metal, the ones we usually encounter are from groups 4 to 10, which go from early to late transition metals. The six transition metals near platinum are called the platinum group metals due to their similar behavior. Columns in the d-block contain three elements and are called triads. Within each triad, we see largest differences in properties between the first and second row of the transition metals. This is shown here in their atomic radius, as the second and third row are substantially larger than the first row. The difference between the second and third row, however, is marginal. This trend is called the lanthanide contraction and is caused due to the addition of f orbitals in the second and third row transition metals.